So Rod, now you've got the patient, and let's say they have optic neuritis and they've got brain lesions that look like MS. Uh, their vision is, they can only see the big E on the chart. What are you gonna do next? Yeah, the next thing I'm gonna do is looking at the pattern. I think it's important to point out also that we wanna do the MRIs with contrast whenever possible. Yeah, because the pattern of contrast enhancement of the optic nerve is often important and it will help to, uh, distinguish some of the mimickers from typical MS that we may talk about. Um, once I've made the decision, I think it's an inflammatory optic neuropathy, then I'm going to recommend treatment. And while we used to say, well, whether we treat or not really doesn't make an impact as far as the visual outcome. Now I think there is some accumulating evidence that suggests earlier treatment is more beneficial to saving the optic nerve. So that treatment for me is typically going to be intravenous corticosteroids. So, so intravenous corticosteroids have a very interesting history uh, with optic neuritis. Um, they actually originated in our practice at Will's Eye in Philadelphia with Norman Schatz, Peter Savino, and myself. Uh, we were confronted with a number of patients who had terrible multiple sclerosis. Uh, we didn't know what to do. We contacted a very good rheumatologist, immunologist in Philadelphia, uh, Ralph D. Horatius, and he told us about multiple sclerosis, about using these steroids at these high doses for patients with lupus and kidney disease. And that's how the high dose IV steroids got started. Uh, we kept using them and eventually one of our fellows, Roy Beck, uh, was fascinated by this and set up a clinical trial uh, called the Optic Neuritis Treatment Trial uh, that enrolled over 400 patients with their initial episode of uh, optic neuritis. Now, when you look at clinical trial data, we always have to look about when the trial was done and what the technology was at that time. At that time, MRI was not as powerful as it is now. The magnets weren't as big. Uh, the magnet strength is measured in Teslas, not the cars, but in the strength of the magnet. And as Rod correctly pointed out, we do these scans now all the time with an enhancing agent called gadolinium. The initial scans on the patients in the optic neuritis treatment trial did not have gadolinium. So if anything, that trial may have underestimated how many other lesions were present. So Rod, what came out of that trial as far as guidelines uh, for us now with uh, optic neuritis leading to MS? Yeah, so there were a, a handful of things that came out of it. One was that uh, there was no difference in visual outcome when you looked at six months and subsequently, even out to 15 years, whether you got treatment or not. And there were actually three arms. There was the IV steroid group, a placebo group, and then a, uh, sorry, there were two arms, and there was no IV placebo. So it was either IV steroids, oral steroids, uh, and that was it. Uh, and so one of the quirky things that came out of the trial was that if you got the oral only, and this was at a dose of around a mg per kilogram, um, then you had an increased incidence of optic neuritis in the same or fellow eye, which to this day I don't think has been explained, but it is a, uh, a, a strange thing that happened out of the study, an unexpected outcome. Uh, the other thing was that there was a small protective effect within a two-year window of developing clinical MS by the IV steroids. So if you got IV steroids, your rate of clinical MS was less by two years. But after that, by year three and every other time point afterwards, out to 15 years, there was no protective difference with the IV steroids. So we used to say, we're going to treat you with IV steroids because it'll speed the onset of visual recovery but it's not going to make a difference in the visual outcome. Yeah, so that's right. I think there was a placebo oral arm as well, but not a placebo IV. And the results have been somewhat controversial. It's actually the first time that MRI was demonstrated uh, to, as I said earlier, to make the uh, invisible visible in a controlled trial. Uh, 
while there is a lot of debate still about what you do in terms of IV and oral, what Raj just talked about, uh, the optic neuritis treatment trial uh, showed us the natural history of this disease. Uh, the trial was continued uh, for 15 years, a really remarkable achievement by Roy and his team. And we were the leading recruiters for this trial. Uh, uh, we enrolled 40 patients after 15 years. And remember, this is before we had medication to treat MS. Only 20 were well enough to come back for a repeat examination. So this shows you that multiple sclerosis must be treated. Uh, the FDA now will not allow trials with placebo. You must treat with a comparator agent. Uh, so the optic neuritis trial really showed that 15 years later, the majority of our patients were disabled. And that's getting back to what people read on the internet, that is still there. Uh, and we treat, as Rod said, with IV steroids. And then we quickly initiate one of the disease modifying medications. If someone doesn't want to take one of the disease modifying medications, that's a mandatory second opinion in our practice. Uh, it, all the trials have shown, as Rod was saying, that the sooner we treat, the better. And uh, you know, we're still looking for the first disease where it's better to treat it later.